Welcome to episode 59 of the series about security podcast for October 9, 2013, brought to you by the Center for Education and Research and Information Assurance and Security, or Sirius at the University. I'm Preston Wiley, and I'm joined by Mike Hill and Keith Watson. Despite the shutdown, we're here. That's so right. We're going to run out shut down. Nope. So, uh, and Keith is going to be talking about uh, quite a bit of stuff this week. Well, we'll uh, <laughs> kind of the same old, same old. Uh, this is another revelation by Edward Snowden related to the NSA. Specifically, this time, it's talking about NSA's attempt to uh, compromise Tor and basically track uh, users on Tor. So I think we've mentioned Tor before, but basically it is a service that you can use to anonymize your traffic. And so if you want to browse the web or use other network-based services, but you're not, you don't want somebody else to follow your progression through uh, what you're doing, you can use Tor, which basically establishes a circuit crossing several other Tor servers in which your traffic is routed. And basically you create the circuit and then you encrypt uh, each packet of information or requests that you're making for each server in the chain. And as the packet passes to one uh, server, it decrypts that information with, and which will then contain routing information to the next server in the chain and so on and so forth. And in each layer, it peels away a little bit of the onion, it's Tor, the onion net router. And eventually, when you get to the exit node, that then makes the request on your behalf, and then the information is then packaged up and routed back the way, the way it was through the Tor network. The idea being that if you have enough Tor servers along the path, it's very hard for somebody to do traffic analysis and determine where your traffic is routed or routed, or determine who it went back to originally. So anyways, NSA is very interested in Tor because it, they believe that a lot of bad guys are actually using Tor um, to avoid being ca captured uh, in terms of their traffic. So what's interesting here is there's a very long presentation about why Tor stinks. And that is the term used um, to describe their feelings about it, mostly because of the fairly good implementation uh, of, the, of the way Tor works, it makes their job very difficult. And that was one of the, one of the main purposes of developing Tor. Uh, I should point out the original Tor research project was, I believe, a Navy Research Labs project. So there's some irony for you. So the, 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 there's a very long list of all the ways that NSA is attempting to exploit and attack Tor. Um, and the the presentation lays out quite a bit, even has nice pretty graphics as well, um, especially with the terrorist and gun strapped around him in a, in a, in a mask. mask and a beard. Don't forget the beard, that's very important. Uh, anyways, we're talking about going back and looking at circuit reconstruction to figure out who the original uh, target was, uh, taking advantage of cookies. Um, you know, when you're a, when you're a Tor user, cookies can be a good way to find you, so you got to be careful with cookies. Um, those can leak and, and lead to problems. There's also one slide that says, analytics, dumb users, epic fail, and describes some of the ways that users are not taking care of uh, their information uh, when they're on the Tor network, and so that can be used to figure out who they were. Uh, there's some different stuff about attacking the Tor, uh, servers, there's talks about uh, handling DNS requests through Tor and how that can be used to track uh, what users are doing. Um, there's a variety of stuff here. Uh, it's very interesting, uh, a lot of slides to look at. Um, so they talk about trying to degrade the Tor experience to the point that might force people to use something else, which might be weaker. There's discussion about uh, flooding Tor nodes to slow the traffic quite a bit. Um, there are a variety of other ways they're trying to uh, take advantage of exploiting the nodes in the network to see if they can do that. Although what's interesting on that slide, it says probably not legal and technical challenges. So there's some concerns about that, possibly because a lot of some number of Tor nodes exist within the United States. So that might be the issue there or part of it. 
Anyways, it's a very interesting presentation, and we also posted two articles, one from Bruce Schneier with his comments on this, and then another one uh, which is more of a general article about the issue. So that was kind of a long explanation, but that, that's kind of the, the intro to the discussion. Yeah, well, I, I, one of the attacks I thought was interesting was how they were using Firefox. Um, I believe it was versions prior to 17, and that Firefox released a patch and inadvertently broke their exploit. So they well, removed they removed something, right? Right. The framework so that broke what they were needing. To yes, do and there's a Tor browser bundle, and and there I, there I know there's a Mac version, there's probably a Windows version, maybe even a Linux version. Basically, it's packaged up uh, Firefox browser and the Tor software and um, it's all one package, and you click the, the start the Tor network, and it makes the connection, and then you browse with that particular version of Firefox, which uses the Tor proxy local to your machine. So it kind of packages it all up so you can use it effectively. The problem was the Firefox version they had had an exploit in it, um, and a couple, I think a couple months ago, that was that became news, and um, they had to go and update the, the Firefox browser that was in the, the Tor bundle. Because they took down some big host of Tor stuff and I'm yeah, trying to yeah, remember. they put some stuff on the on some JavaScript code or something on the Yeah, I think it was a, an exploit with, with JavaScript. I'm trying to look it up real quick. But yeah, the Tor project does have a a Tor bundle for a variety of different uh, systems. And it basically allows you to browse anonymously with the Tor. You don't have to worry about setting up the Tor software on your on your machine. You don't have to install um, you know, any configuration or anything like that. You just use it, throw it away when you're done. Another interesting uh, thing about it is they arrested somebody who ran the Silk Road, I think, just recently, which yes. stole a lot of illegal things. And they had to go back so, and track that person down yes. quite a bit. Allegedly. I, I, allegedly I, runs. I don't believe. <laughs> Alleg oh, sorry. Sorry. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> They've got to be able to prove without a doubt that right. he's the guy and if you protect all his right. information yeah. well enough. That and I guess seized cool. a lot of it. So. Something like 600,000, wasn't it? That was in the millions. Was it in the millions? Oh, millions of dollars. Maybe. But I think it was like 600,000. Oh, yeah, it could have 600,000. Yeah. yeah, millions of dollars for it. Yeah. So, so they're having some successes as far as, as finding out where things are. Well, I don't know that uh, the way they caught that guy was, you know, I don't think it was weaknesses in the, in the in tour so much as his, they tracked him down through various posts he'd made over time, yeah, over know. several I years. Mean it, I think it goes on to stupid users. <laughs> that might fall into that category, although, you know, you soon, he probably assumed he took the right precautions. Oh, uh, yeah, but I, I think. But anyway, uh, as far as as far as this goes, I mean, you know, Tor is used for a lot of illegal activities, but it's also wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's but it also that statement up. But it also has. We don't know that it's used for a lot of illegal activities. We know <laughs> okay, that it is used. The yes. extent to which it is used is not clear. Right. I'm going to defend Tor a little bit here. Well, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm purposely it as well. I'm I'm not saying it's. It's also used for some legitimate activities as well, such as well, sure, such it's, as it's being used to browse the web in countries that are not that don't allow yes. you to do things and, and do things like that, evade blocks and stuff like that. So it has legitimate purposes, and it has it illegitimate. Is, it is purposes. like any yes. quote unquote dual use technology. Yeah. Just as your laptop can be used to create, to conduct crime. A majority of the users are not using and, it. And I don't have a problem with crime fighters doing stuff against things like this in order to fight crime. But I have a problem with crime fighters targeting all users as if they're criminals. Well, yes, and that, that's which, in my mind, the general discussion yes. about what NSA is doing. Which, which is a problem. And if, if they say, oh, this user is doing something illegal, and they go out and they start trying to figure out who they are on the Tor network. That's that's okay. 
But if they just, in, in general, say we're going to decode, every, we're going to de-anonymize every single person that uses Tor, right. that's a problem. Yes. Well, yeah, we've had this discussion before. You know, they're yes. capturing as much as they can, and Tor, you know, it masks what activity is being done. So don't they have to kind of rip back some layers to see? I mean, do they have a legitimate argument? Well, it's really hiding a lot of information from us, so we well, we should be able to dig down far enough to say, oh, well, this is legitimate, and we'll back away. Um, do, you know, is there a legitimate reason for them to do that? Because I mean, they're capturing all kinds of traffic. We've talked about this in other yes. realms, you know, with the telephones and everything. I mean, this is, as you said, Tor can be used for good, but it can also be used for evil. It can be used for bad things, right? Um, so, how much digging are they allowed to do? Because Tor masks activities better than just wide open traffic, right? So you have to do a little more digging. So do they have the right to kind of capture it and then say, well, we're going to discard things that we know to be legitimate? There's no way to know. There's That's no the way problem. to know until they start digging, right? So, as crime fighters, do they have a legitimate right to capture that? They're not crime fighters. They're not crime fighters. The NSA does not fight crime. <laughs> Um, true. Well, they, they capture, you know, they're trying to find communication though, right? They're trying to determine what the bad guys are saying. And if you get all this encrypted communication, it's like, how do you start digging through it and say, I want to find something. Is that the right approach or is it more as Preston described? I have a, you know, I have a good reason to believe that the person doing activity under this IP address is up to no good. They've done other things. We're going to trace it back through that path. Versus taking it all and just sifting through and saying, well, let's see well, what I can find we, out. I think, I, I think it would be better if there were <laughs> ways for them to sift out what they were specifically looking for. But that kind of defeats the purpose of TOR. I mean, right. TOR is designed to anonymize all traffic and right. to provide uh, enough protection from trackback analysis to prevent a very well-financed adversary from detecting who you are. Well, in my opinion, if the NSA or whoever made advances enough to de-anonymize Tor on a whim, Tor no longer exists, they shut themselves down. If Well, Tor doesn't... The Tor network is a loose affiliation right. of, of it Tor is. servers. It is. Uh, it's not like there's a company, behind right? It. Right. It's so there, like well, there is a, there is some It is it's a project a, with a with a. Um, but it's a project of, a of software. software. Right. It's a project of software. And that software is used to build a variety of Tor servers and exit nodes right. that exist all over the place and can be can be brought up and shut down just as quickly. Too. Right. And I think we talked about this a while back, where it was. Uh, I think we mentioned that if the number of Good nodes were greater than the number of bad nodes, then Tor was in a stable state. And when the number of bad nodes, <coughs> in other words, if NSA set up a bunch of nodes, yes. it was greater than the number of good nodes, then you have a problem. So it, relies, it, it relies on people who have good intentions setting up nodes in order to keep it in a yes. functioning state. Yes, there is that. Well, I think they must be functioning okay for the NSA to title the document Tor Sinks. Because from their perspective, it's giving them fits. They're not able to well, yeah. de anonymize all traffic, which I don't know that they ever could. I mean, well, I guess if they found a way to do that, as Preston mentioned, it would go away. Something else would come up in its place, a different method. But just the way it's set up, I think it's very difficult. It would be very difficult for them to create something like that, where they could de-anonymize all traffic. So I'm, I'm thinking, based on this information, that we shouldn't be too worried about continuing to use Tor for our legitimate purposes. We'll make that clear, for our legitimate purposes. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, you know, just another revelation. You think more of these things are going to be coming out? Well, I hope so. You didn't feel so. You think there's a whole laundry list of things to come? So I, I, I think there's still a lot left to see. So <laughs> we look forward to but, but do you think that, I mean, these things come out, but are they, do they change anything? They give us, they give us some I think, information. I think they give us some information. They might alter practices that, that users might take. 
if you're expecting the government to kind of do some more inquiry into what's going on in terms of legislators, uh, they're a little busy right now. Yeah, they are. A lot of real busy trying to keep the government shut down or bring it back up. Who knows what they're trying to do? <laughs> right. <laughs> and, 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 and they seem to just, and, and, and when, when, when it comes to this stuff, people just say terrorists. Oh, yeah, they just say that's, that's it. A terrorist word, and then, and then suddenly it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So. But, Especially those terrorist among us. But, but couldn't terrorists use any type of technology in any setting? I mean, isn't that an argument that works against every single piece well, of they, technology that the, exists? The yeah. counterexample, yeah. that's, that's, that's true, true. <laughs> but the counterexample to that was Bin Laden, who didn't use technology. And he stopped using a phone a long time ago. He used messengers, physical messengers, to go and deliver communications. <laughs> Yeah. So I, he either either knew the capabilities of the NSA very well and and took advantage of that. I mean, he hid out for the longest time before they found him. Pretty much out in the open. Yeah. Pretty well. I mean, he was effectively, yeah. Effectively, yeah. yeah. But he, wasn't, he, he wasn't in a cave. He wasn't in a cave. Yeah. That whole story is different. Yeah. So but, uh, but, uh, anyways, we should find the book. Okay, uh, well, another article for discussion. Uh, we, we talked, I think, even last week a little bit about Yahoo recycling their email accounts. And not to be outdone, Microsoft wants to join and, and recycle their Outlook and Live accounts. And according to, I'm, I'm going to pronounce the name wrong, Web World. W-E-B-W-E-R-E-L-D. Uh, Microsoft will recycle accounts after 360 days of inactivity. Now, in the terms of service agreement, they mentioned that you must periodically access your account every 270 days, and then if you do not, you know, basically become deactivated and the information will be deleted from their servers. Uh, I think folks are getting a little upset because there's really no clear language that states that they could or would recycle the accounts. Uh, but apparently they did confirm that they will reuse accounts after 360 days. So, I, you know, I just wanted to mention this because we were just, it's just on the heels of us talking about Yahoo and, and all the implications Yahoo's having to deal with. Now we learn that, that Microsoft's also in this similar boat. A little bit different timing, but essentially doing the same thing. Um, and one of their quotes was that they they, uh, they, they want to ensure that Outlook.com is the best email service available. And, and, and my comments would be they, they should probably do it more like Google then and make a statement that they're not going to recycle email addresses. Uh, that was another thing that, that came out of this. Google did confirm, I think we've mentioned it before, that they will not re re reuse your username. That if you delete your account, it can never be used again in the future. So I, I guess the advice here is if you're on Yahoo, you're on Outlook, maybe get a Gmail account. <laughs> you know, if you're looking for an account in the future that's not going to be reused if you stop using it. What do you think? What do you think? Well, yeah, we've, we've, we've kind of <laughs> been kicking this horse yeah, we've for been a while for a few with, with Yahoo in the past. So it's kind of surprising that uh, Microsoft has chosen to do this as well. Um, I think we've, we've talked about maybe the business reasons why they want to do that from the Yahoo perspective. Yeah. Less so from the Microsoft perspective. Um, it does say they're, you know, they've got it in their services agreement, and I don't recall where Yahoo mentioned it other than, than in the press, or if they updated their terms of service to do that. But uh, again, it's the same issue of, oh, you know, once you start recycling these things, and people who previously had that address are going to get. Uh, send email either from old contacts with incorrect information or services they signed up for, um, and and maybe they, you know, figured out that that, that particular account had some association with a web service and they just request a password change and suddenly that email shows up where it wasn't supposed to go, or rather where it was supposed to go but it's the wrong user, and so we've seen that already with Yahoo. And now it sounds like we'll see that as well with the Microsoft accounts. Yeah, well. and if I'm not mistaken, I believe they were already doing that with Hotmail. I think it was kind of understood that they could do that with Hotmail. But 
I think what's surprising here is that they're also going to do it the Outlook.com addresses. And I think there was sort of a implied notion that if you had an Outlook address, that it would not get reused. I'm not sure where that kind of stemmed from, but yeah, there's really no clear language in their service agreement that says they they will do it, but they have confirmed. Um, if they, they have uh, the agreement says they'll uh, they'll deactivate, they'll deactivate, but not. Yeah, and it says your data may be permanently deleted, but it doesn't say you're going to be recycled. Right, right. Yeah, that's the issue. And it sounds like because um, this this was reported on from from the Netherlands. It sounds like um, someone may push forward with you know potentially a lawsuit saying you know that this is you know kind of an invasion of privacy. This was not stated up front, and uh, you know just kind of help raise awareness of the issue that these things can't happen. So. Um, yeah, it's it, it's kind of disappointing to see it so soon after uh, Yahoo. I don't know if it had anything to do with it. It might just be the timing. It might be that Microsoft's always done this, but done it quietly. Um, you know, kind of kept it quiet. And now that people have looked into Yahoo, it wasn't surprising if journalists have started looking at all the major providers. Said, well, does anyone else do this? I mean, we kind of talked about that a little bit. You know, are any of the other major ones going to do this? We talked about, you know, that. In theory, they have the right to. You know, it's their data, it's their servers. You're using it for free, and if you're not using it, then uh, you can see from a business perspective, they have the right to kind of kick you off of it and let someone else take that same space with that same name. Um, but from a security perspective, it's just got it's just a bad idea. It's it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Putting your users at risk. Yeah. Even when they didn't expect. True. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> just not telling people about it, I think, is the worst part of the whole the whole thing. So yeah, um, I don't know. I I use uh, I have my own domain and use the uh, Google Apps for Google Apps for Business thing to have my own domain through Gmail. So I think that that way, even if Google did recycle email addresses. They will recycle. They wouldn't recycle mine. Yeah, it's my domain, so they don't. <coughs> I can change the the records for it and move my email somewhere else if I wanted to. So I don't know if they that was free when I signed up for it. I don't know if it's free anymore. I was just trying to look at no, it. No, it is not. I don't think it is. I it think is not pay for it. So, but I'm grandfathered in, so it's free. It continues to be free for me. So it's nice. So. All right, anything else to say? No, I think we've talked about that this one a lot. <laughs> so All right, well, on. thanks to Mike Hill and Keith Watson. I'm Preston Wiley. Have a safe and secure day.